Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and welcome to my first video of the year and we're kicking off with a long term review of the PlayStation 5. So the PS5 launched at the end of 2020, but I wanted to give you my updated thoughts, what I like, dislike, along with a few areas where the PS5 could be improved. Now during the last year we have seen a few updates in both hardware and software, including the unlocking of the SSD bay, new controllers and accessories and some much needed UI improvements. So if you've not got a PlayStation 5, hopefully this will give you a better idea of what it's like after a full year. And if you've got one already, let me know what your favourite features are or if I've missed any in today's video. Okay, let's talk about the games. After all, that's the whole reason we're buying a PlayStation 5 in the first place. And the PS5 exclusives we've had so far have been incredible. Games including Returnal, Ratchet & Clank, Demon's Souls and not forgetting Astro's Playroom. These have been really strong games to play and show off how capable the PS5 is. I just wish we'd seen more exclusives over the first 12 months. I don't feel like we've had enough, but then again the first year of any new console is very similar. But we've also had some PlayStation 4 games receiving the PS5 updates. This allows them to run at higher frame rates or better resolutions. These have included Spider-Man Remastered and Miles Morales, Death Stranding, Ghost of Tsushima, Assassin's Creed and loads more. But it's not just about the new or the updated games, it's about how well they run on the PlayStation 5. Once I finish work and my kids are in bed, I can pick up a controller, turn the PlayStation 5 on and be gaming in about 30 seconds. Everything loads and runs so fast and smoothly. The whole gaming experience is effortless and it's rare that you're sat staring at a loading screen waiting for the next level or scene to play. The fact that the PlayStation 5 is capable of running games at 4K HDR and 120 frames is insanely good. Not all games support it, but we're seeing more popping up on a monthly basis. And if you've got a TV or monitor that supports it, you will really appreciate just how good the games look. I'm using the LG C1 OLED and the GP950 monitor. Both of these support the PS5's full specs, and I've been blown away by how good it looks. Now, keeping the console and the games up to date has been really easy. If you keep the PlayStation 5 in rest mode like I do, it will update your games while you're away. So most of the time the games are ready to play as soon as you switch it on. Unless of course it's Call of Duty, they like to push updates out just minutes before I'm ready to sit down for the night. But when you look at how many games are actually PlayStation 5 exclusives, you realise most of the games released in 2021 were available on the PlayStation 4 too. So if you've not been able to pick up a PlayStation 5 yet, there's probably only a handful of games you're actually missing out on. Saying that, this year we're going to see some incredible games released. We've got Gran Turismo 7, Horizon Forbidden West, and God of War Ragnarok. Then at a later date, we've got Spider-Man 2 and Wolverine, so loads of games to look forward to. Let's talk about the design of the PlayStation 5. I know it's had some criticism based on its appearance and massive size, but personally, I like it. Maybe I've got used to it having looked at it practically every day, but it fits in with my setups and it doesn't look so bad. I love the fact that you can use it both horizontally and vertically, so depending on your setup or the space you have available, you can choose to have it either way. I have it stood up on my desk and I have it laid down under my TV. It does come with a stand which you need to use to change its orientation, and this is how the PlayStation 5 can lie on its side. The stand does what it's supposed to do, although I think it looks better without, as it's a bit cheap and plasticky looking. Out of the box it comes in white, which is probably the colour most have stuck with over the last year. I did customise mine with some D-brand plates just a few months after launch and that's how it's remained ever since. For me I think it looks even better in black, it's got a nice clean and stealthy look to it, but the plates are very easy to remove and they just pop off with a little force. Also as the centrepiece is normally glossy it's prone to scratches and collecting dust, whereas this matte finish is so much easier to maintain, and this is just a vinyl strip that sticks over the top. Now D-brand originally launched the plates in black, but towards the end of 2021 they released their version 2 plates. These offer more colour choices as well as changing the shape of the plates and adding a vent on the side. I didn't think I would like them, but do you know what? They actually look pretty good. But what do you think to these? Do you prefer the standard shape or do you prefer this smaller rounded design? But towards the end of 2021, Sony actually announced their official plates which will be available to order this month. The first colours available will match the controllers that we saw last year. So that's the Midnight Black and the Cosmic Red. I will definitely be grabbing these plates to replace the ones I have as mine are lacking the PlayStation logo on the side. So one of the biggest selling points of the PlayStation 5 is the new DualSense controller. Now when they first announced it, I wasn't sure it would really make that much of a difference. But I can tell you now, after more than a year of using it, it is awesome. It's noticeably bigger than the DualShock 4 controllers, so initially coming from that it did feel weird. However, I really like it, it feels nice in the hand and definitely has a more ergonomic design to it. I've actually gotten used to it now that the DualShock 4 controller feels way too small. 
So one of the features of the new controller is the much talked about haptic feedback. And this gives you a kind of bespoke vibration to what you're doing in a game. Whether you're shooting, walking, driving or jumping, it makes it feel a lot more immersive. Then there's the adaptive triggers, which for me are a game changer. The fact that the triggers will adjust to the task or activity you're doing is actually incredible. If you pull the trigger in an FPS game, you will feel a slight resistance, which is replicating the gun trigger. The same goes for racing games. If you're accelerating or braking, you can feel it adapt as you press it. I thought these features would be a bit of a gimmick, but having used it, I think they are great. But if you don't want to use them, you can switch them off in the settings, something you might want to do in an FPS game. Hopefully more and more developers will include support for these in their games, and they don't completely die like they did with the touch bar on the PlayStation 4. So originally the PlayStation 5 launched with the white controller, but last summer we saw the addition of the Midnight Black and the Cosmic Red. Then very recently, Sony announced the three new colours, including Starlight Blue, Nova Pink and Galactic Purple. I still think the Midnight Black controller is best, but it's great to see we've got loads of different colour options available. Then we've got the battery life, which is okay. I usually get between 5 to 8 hours depending on what game that I'm playing. It's not great, but as I've always got one or two controllers charging, it's not a huge problem for me. The storage on the PlayStation 5 has definitely been an issue. Not so much at the beginning where there were limited games, but as I'm buying and downloading more, I am finding myself having to delete games. The internal storage is just 825 gigabytes, and only 667 is actually usable. So depending on the games that you're playing, you can probably get away with installing about 5 to 10 games. Vanguard and Warzone, for example, where they take up 150 gig combined. Fortunately, there's the option to use an external drive. I'm using a 1TB SanDisk Extreme SSD, and that allows me to store and play my PlayStation 4 games. You can store PlayStation 5 games on it too, but you cannot play directly from the drive. You would need to copy the games back onto the internal drive first. These are relatively cheap, but they will stick out the back of the console. Then there's the expansion bay, which PlayStation unlocked earlier last year after some beta testing. This bay allows you to now install and play games from an additional internal SSD drive. I'm using a 2TB SN850 from Western Digital. It took about 10 minutes to install, and as it's additional storage, it doesn't replace the 667GB you already have. This now means I've got about 3.5TB of available space, of which I've already used 1.5TB for the games I have installed. I definitely shouldn't need to delete any games for a while, but I still think a 2TB internal drive should have been included as standard. I really like the overall style of the menus and the dash. It's nice and clean and this 4K HDR dashboard just looks awesome. I like the game tiles, the full screen wallpapers and the sounds as you move around. The small PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5 icons next to each game. These are a great touch and it's something that we saw in the latest update. It's also incredibly fast and snappy when navigating the menus. There's no lag at all and hopefully something that will never change. The quick actions you get when you press the menu button on the controller are really useful. It's a great way to check for updates or move a game from one drive to another without going into the settings. The pop-up menu across the bottom definitely needs some work. I like the fact that you can customise the options you want to show and in which order, but I hate the fact that every time you press the PlayStation icon on the controller, it defaults to highlighting the news or the recently created clips. You then have to navigate down to select what you actually want. But it is pretty cool that this little arrow icon that appears across the bottom is only active when you're downloading or uploading something. It disappears when it's not in use. But we've seen some great updates to the UI over the last year, including the trophy list layout. When this launched, it looked nice, but it was far from user-friendly. They've since updated it, so the trophies are now in a vertical list instead of using the cards. And this looks so much nicer now. I've definitely gotten used to the party chat or the voice chats, but it's still not 100% user-friendly. One-to-one -one voice chats don't really exist like they used to. Every time you create a voice chat with someone, it actually creates a party chat. Then when you leave that voice chat, well, the party chat is still there. I found the easiest way is to favourite your most used parties, so this way they are always at the top. Otherwise, they simply get lost in all of the voice chat conversations that you're having. Now, the PlayStation app is great, and it makes the whole gaming experience for this console even better. Being able to search for, buy, and download games straight to the PlayStation 5 is awesome. So if you're away from home and you want to install a new game, we just open the app and you can download it. The app is also great for notifications, whether that's once a new game is installed and it's ready to play, or when your mates come online or join a party that you're a member of. It would be awesome if you could also share screenshots and videos from the PlayStation 5 to your phone. This would be so much easier than having to upload the content to Twitter or transfer it to an external drive. Over the last year, we've seen some great new accessories from PlayStation. 
that includes the new controller colors as well as the upcoming plates. We've also had the new Pulse 3D headset in both white and the new midnight black color. But in the last few days, PlayStation also confirmed the specs for the new VR2, the new virtual reality headset for the PlayStation 5. And this looks incredible. The specs appear to be very strong. It will offer a 4K 120Hz OLED display with a field of view of 110 degrees. It'll have eye tracking, haptic feedback, adaptive triggers and vibration in the headset. The fact it won't need an external camera and a simple one cable setup is awesome. At the moment the prices and the dates have not been confirmed, but any guesses? I'm going to go with a September or October release at around $450. So I use the PS5 both under my TV and on my desk. And although it's very quiet, especially compared to the PlayStation 4, it's not whisper quiet. If you're in a room with no sound on at all, you can definitely hear it. Although I'm usually wearing headphones or I have my speakers on. I've never heard the fans kick in though, even after 10 hours of gaming. But just note that when you do play a game from a disc or leave a disc in during startup, the drive does spin up. One noise we still cannot disable is the startup beep. It's pretty loud and if you're in a quiet room or in the middle of the night, it seems to sound 10 times louder. It would be useful if we could turn this off in the settings. On the whole, the PlayStation 5 has been a great console, but there are a few features I think it's still lacking. I want to see folders added so we can store or organize our games as we would like. Being able to use dynamic themes or our own wallpapers would also add a nice customization layer. We still don't have 1440p support. It's not a problem for me as my TV and monitor support 4K 120, but I know a lot of people do use a 1440p monitor. And finally, VRR, or variable refresh rate. I know there are rumors of an update coming later this year, so it would be great to see all of these new features added. So after more than a year with the PlayStation 5, these are my final thoughts. It has been a pretty solid and reliable console. Everything runs smooth, it's quiet, fast, and looks great. The new DualSense controller turned out to be far better than I expected, and the whole gaming experience has been great. The games that we've seen so far have been decent, but the upcoming games will make the lineup even stronger. Plus the fact that some PlayStation 4 games have been updated to run better on the PlayStation 5 is welcome too. So there it is, that was my one year later review of the PS5, and it has been awesome. I'm looking forward to many more years with this console and the games it will get to play. Well, you've just made it to the end of today's video, so thank you for watching. But I also want to say a massive thank you to everybody who has supported my channel over the last two years. We have just passed 200,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane. So let me wish you a happy new year, and any goals that you set yourself this year, I hope you achieve them. And if you drop a nice PS5 in the comments, I will know you're still here, so I will give you a thumbs up. And here's another couple of videos you might be interested in watching next. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on so you don't miss my next upload. You can also follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.